Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. Today we're making the Billy One Piece. This one piece can be made a bunch of different ways. And in this tutorial, I'm just gonna be demonstrating one of those ways. But as I go through, I will mention if you do want to go in another direction, what that would look like. In fair warning, this pattern is more on the advanced side. The techniques are pretty similar, but there's a couple steps at the very end that are just different. And so if you're not comfortable doing anything but beginner patterns, then this might be one to skip or at least wait until you're confident with it. And if you ever have questions about the skill level a pattern requires, there's a new feature on the website where if you click on a product, you can scroll down below the product photos and there's a tab with frequently asked questions. And one of those questions is how difficult is this to make? So please use that feature before you buy a pattern. And I also recommend watching the video tutorial beforehand just to make sure you're confident you know how to do it. So that's enough of that, let's get into the tutorial. For materials you will need swimwear fabric. For this one, you'll want about a yard, maybe a yard and a half of fabric. Quarter inch swimwear elastic. I sell the exact elastic that I use on my website. You'll need a cutting tool like a rotary cutter or scissors. And for this one, you'll also be needing a seam ripper. If you're curious about where I get all my tools, I will link a blog post on that topic. The last thing you need is the PDF pattern for the Billy One Piece, which is available now at edgewaterapp.com. So first, print out your pattern pieces according to the instructions inside the pattern. You will need to choose what coverage option you're going to be making. So again, just use the pattern instruction pages to figure out exactly what pieces you will need. And you're gonna cut two in each of your pattern pieces for a total of eight separate pieces. As usual, if you want to make yours reversible, you'll want to cut one in each of your fabrics in each of your pattern pieces. So like I mentioned earlier, this style has a couple different options as far as how you can customize it. I'll be sharing a few of those options now because some of them do require you make certain decisions while you're cutting. And all of these customizations have to do with the top front piece. There's a bunch of different things you can do to make it look cute. So the first option is to do nothing. You can leave it as is, as the pattern is already. The second option is you can make the front piece with a twist or some sort of knot in it. And the twist is what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I wanted to mention this now because if you're cutting your fabric and you plan on doing a twist or a knot, I find that it looks best if you use the same fabric for the front and the back or for the self and the lining. Uh, Cause when the fabric twists, you can see both of the fabrics and maybe if your fabric's coordinated, it can look good. But for me, I just like using the same color for the lining and the self. So if that's something you want to do, make sure you're cutting two of the same fabric for your top front piece. So that's what I chose to do, but for the rest of my pieces, I'm cutting one in my terracotta colored fabric and then one in my tan fabric. There are some options that you don't really need to worry about what color is on the reverse side. One of them is leaving it as is. Another option is you can use the top back piece as the front. It has a little less coverage, and so if you're wanting something more skimpy, that is a really quick fix in order to get that. And I'm sure there's a bunch more customizations you can do, but the last one I'll talk about is doing a drawstring at the front. You could do either a drawstring or you can even do like a scrunchy elastic look. For the drawstring, you can follow the Kira Top tutorial. It pretty much outlines exactly what you do. Um, the drawstring, the drawstring part is at the very end, so you could follow this tutorial all the way through and then at the very end, do your drawstring detail. So I wasn't kidding, there's a lot of options. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by everything I'm saying right now, I'm gonna try and clarify a little more in the written directions of every option that's on the table. All right, so now we have all our pieces and we can move on to construction. So during this construction process, at first, we're going to treat every piece pretty much the same, but later on, we're going to sew very specific seams in certain places. So just make sure to pay close attention. First, match all of your pieces with right sides together. For the top pieces, you'll sew along the armholes, neckline, and the bottom line. 
For the bottom pieces, you'll sew along the leg holes and the waistline. So keep in mind, we're not gonna be touching those tab areas at all. And in fact, we're not sewing those until the very last step. And to all of these areas, I will be sewing on my elastic at the same time. Before I use my serger, I like to first go in with a basting stitch. This is gonna make it easier to sew in the next step. This part is optional, but highly recommended. And if you want some more information on what exactly a basting stitch is and what it's used for, I will link a video on that. Then we're gonna switch over to the serger and sew and attach elastic to all the areas I mentioned using either a three or four thread overlock stitch. I like to use a four thread overlock stitch. I'm using my elastic foot to help attach elastic. And if you want more information on how to sew elastic, what is an elastic foot, where to get them, that type of thing, I will link an entire elastic playlist that has everything you need and that's really a good place to start. And as always, if you don't have a serger, anytime in any of my videos, if I'm using an overlock stitch, you can use a zigzag stitch on your regular machine. So now all those pieces are sewn and they have elastic attached. So first we're gonna focus on just our top pieces. You can put your bottom pieces to the side. Take one of the top pieces to the right side and then insert it inside of the other top piece. At this point, you should have right sides together. Then pin together each of the straps as well as each of the sides. You're going to use either a straight stitch or an overlock stitch or both and sew across all four layers of fabric on each of these areas. Again, I'm not touching those little tab areas. It's completely unsewn at this point. Once you're finished, trim the excess if you chose a straight stitch. So that takes care of our top pieces, and now we're gonna be doing something slightly different with our bottom pieces. Again, take one of the pieces to the right side and insert it inside of the other with the right sides together. Now align the gusset in each of the sides, just like we did for the top. However, this is where we are going to treat things very different. For the gusset seam, you can sew across all four layers, just like in the previous step. And for that, you can use either a straight stitch or overlock stitch or both, like I said, and trim the excess if needed. But for the sides, you do not want to sew across all four layers of fabric. You only want to sew across two. So to do this, you'll need to match up the sides with right sides together and sew a straight line down across two layers of fabrics, and this will sew the sides. For this, I like to do an overlock stitch, but if you don't have one, you can use a zigzag stitch. And do not skip this step. You need to sew across two layers of fabric if you sew across four, you're going to get stuck in your swimsuit.
So now our next goal is to attach the top and the bottom. First, take your top all the way to the right side. Since those tabs are still left unsewn, you'll be able to take your top all the way to the right side through one of those areas. So before you go inserting your top piece into your bottom, you need to make sure that the way you're inserting it, you will have your front panels matched up and your back panels matched up. So it might be easiest if you take some scissors or a little sewing notch clipper and clip into the seam allowance to mark which side is for the front panels and which side is for the back panels. And make sure you do this because as I was filming this, I ended up making this exact same mistake. So in this image, my right sides are actually not together. So the next step, I recommend you take it one part at a time, go slow. Our goal is going to be lining up those tabs on the top pieces and bottom pieces with right sides together. I like to first insert one side of the top piece in, aligning it correctly with the tabs of the bottom piece with right sides together and pinning. And only then will I slowly go back and stuff the rest of the top inside the bottom piece, also aligning the other set of tabs on the other side and pinning those. So here is why we did not do a straight stitch for those bottom pieces. In order to align the tabs correctly, you kind of have to pull part of the piece out in order to get those right sides together completely. Now take this over to your sewing machine or serger and sew together each of those tabs across all four layers of fabric. And I don't know if this is necessary, but for this seam, I had a feeling I should do an overlock stitch as well. It just, that seam particularly holds a lot of tension, but it's totally up to you if you want to do just one of them or both. So everything is stuffed inside and now we need to take this piece to the right side. To do this, take your seam ripper and rip about a two inch hole somewhere along an existing seam. Through this hole, take everything to the right side. Then your final step is finishing off that hole. You can use either a straight stitch on your sewing machine by just sewing right on top, or you can use an invisible stitch by hand. And that completes the Billy one piece. Lots of options for this one piece as for what to do with the top part. And in addition to that, there's a full coverage that I'm wearing here and there's also a cheeky option. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Make sure to grab the Billy One Piece pattern and I will see you in the next one.